So let's build the structure carbon dioxide um, from its Lewis structures. Okay, so CO2 is carbon dioxide. Everybody's cool with that. Right? So the first thing we want to do is write the three atoms. Okay, so which of these atoms can make the most bonds, carbon or oxygen? Carbon, okay, so that's probably going to be your central atom. Okay. And in fact, in this case, it will. So let's draw Lewis structure of carbon, Lewis structure of oxygen. And again, I'm just drawing these. in this particular way, because I know how I'm going to bond them. So how many bonds would you expect carbon and oxygen here? Two, Two right? Why? Because oxygen needs its octet good, right? Is everybody OK with that? What about over here? Same. What'll, what'll happen when you do both of these oxygens bonded to this carbon with double bonds? Yeah. Or two double bonds the carbon will be filled up. Yeah, so you'll have two double bonds, a double bond here and a double bond here, right? You'll have a full octet on this oxygen, full octet on this oxygen, and also, like you were saying, only the full octet on the carbon. Right? Is everybody okay with that? So, yeah. You know it's a double bond because there's two empty on the oxygen. Right? So there's two, and there's two spaces here, right? And there's four spaces here. Okay. So let's just put it together, and you'll see, and see if you'll have that same question. Okay. So remember our fish hook arrows. straight from just this kind of structure to bonding. You can do that intermediate thing like I was saying, like they used to do in the early 1900s. And they'll show you. So like that, right? Is everybody OK with that? Now I know it looks very strange, right? But you can see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 around oxygen, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 around carbon. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 around oxygen. Okay. So again, we want to draw it like a modern person. So that's carbon dioxide. So some things that we'll learn about carbon dioxide <coughs> in a little bit, but I'm going to give you a preview since we're recording this thing, um, is that when you look at the bonds, right, you should realize there's going to be a difference in electronegativity between carbon and oxygen. Is everybody cool with that? Yes? No? Yes. Yeah. OK. So yes, right? Which one of these is more electronegative? Oxygen. In fact, it's one of the more electronegative elements. That's one of the three that you're going to want to remember, the very electronegative ones, OK? So if I said, which way is the negative charge being pulled in each of these bonds? Or if you want to think of which, where's the partial positive and the partial negative in these bonds, right? So carbon, when looking at this bond here, is going to have a partial positive and the oxygen will be partial negative. Is everybody OK with that? Okay, same thing over here. We'll have partial positive and part, whoops, partial negative there. OK, is everybody OK with that? And also, the amount of pulling that this negative will have is the exact amount of pulling that that negative will have. Is everybody OK with that? So this structure is a linear structure. All of these atoms are in the same plane. Okay? They're in a line. Another way to depict this is through these vector arrows. The butt of the arrow has a plus sign, indicating that it's the positive section. Okay? And the head of the arrow means negative. That's a negative um, a picture in chemistry is arrow. But notice they're pulling equal but opposite in nature, right? So even though 
So would you say this bond is polar or nonpolar? The bond is polar or nonpolar? Polar, right? Why? Because there's a difference in electronegativity. Yeah, there's partial charges, okay? So the bond itself is polar. But if you asked if the whole molecule is polar, you would say no, because they're pulling opposite charges. So it's like pulling tug of war, two people pulling tug of war that are of equal strength. You're not going anywhere. Okay? So the bonds are polar, but the molecule itself is nonpolar. Okay. We'll talk more. Yeah. So if one of the options was like sulfur, would that be polar then? Yeah, so it would be polar then because there would be a difference of electronegativity, right? So um, we'll talk more about this. And in fact, this is a linear molecule. So when we get um, diff other geometries of molecules, you'll see that they may be polar or nonpolar just due to their various geometries. Okay. Is there any other questions on this?